background. Big Bird, Johnny Man. Give people a chance to come in. We're about 10.30 today. It's 10.29. We're not. All right. We'll just wait another minute. Ginger, wait a minute. How are you doing? <laughs> doing Good little something. bunny. You look a little bit like my friend Mousy. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, like when she has the fur. When she has the fur, it's the name of the bird. When she, she has is she 10 years old too, I guess, isn't she? It's a boy. She, uh, hey, she had boy. some hard times. I never knew Mousy. Mousy left her in the rain <laughs> in Houston, yeah. in downtown. I remember. It was sad. <laughs> 10 30. All right, you ready? Sure. It's, mm -hmm. uh, well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, we at Reeds are wearing our mask if you come into the store to make sure you're safe and we're safe. I'm going to take my mask off for story time, of course, but uh, this is Jack Reed Jr. And this is a new chapter in our story time for this Friday, which I think um, you at home are going to be excited about. I hope uh, you will be. We're excited about it. Uh, we're going to start having an opportunity, a little portion of every story time, to be dedicated to children readers. Uh, and if you want, if you and you're watching, you're a child, you're watching, you'd like to to read or your parents or grandparents or uncles or aunts or friends that you're watching with would like to do that, just call our bookstore and let us know and we'll try to work everybody in in a, as reasonable a time as we can. Uh, we'll still have adults reading for uh, at least half the time, maybe more, but when we have opportunities for children who want to read, we're going to do that, uh, start doing that. So uh, I hope everybody is safe and healthy again uh, as we continue to uh, shelter and, and open carefully and safely some of the businesses in town. I know school is uh, still out and uh, Tupelo High School graduation is taking place this week and other graduations around are taking place. So congratulations to all you graduates, high school, community college, college graduates. We're proud of you. I know you did a lot of reading when you uh, were growing up and still doing a lot of reading or you wouldn't be smart enough to graduate. Um, so today uh, we're going to start off with our children readers and our first reader is going to be Bess Forrester, our, one of our granddaughters from Birmingham and uh, Bess is 10 years old and Bess thank you for agreeing to read with us today. I'm going to let you come over here and announce which book. So Ginger is glad to have you with us and uh, thank you for coming. My pleasure. All right. I'm going to be reading when I was young in the mountains, um, what? A little louder. I'm going to be reading when I was young in the mountains, um, and it's about these two um kids who live in the mountains. Love. When I was young in the mountains. When I was young in the mountains. Grandfather came home in the evening covered with the black dust of a coal mine. Only his lips were clean and he used them to kiss the top of my head. When I was young in the mountains, grandmother spread the table with hot cornbread, pinto beans, and fried okra. There they are. Later, in the middle of the night, she walked through the grass with me to the Johnny house and held my hand in the dark. I promised never to eat more than one serving of okra again. Back in the olden days, they didn't have toilets or bathrooms in the um, house. They had to go outside to do their business. When I was young in the mountains, we walked across the cow pasture and through the woods carrying our towel. The swimming hole was dark and muddy and sometimes saw snakes, but we jumped in anyway. There's a snake and that little boy and the girl jumping in and they're not being scared at all, but I would be scared and my sister right there would be scared too. <laughs> On our way home, we stopped at Mr. Crawford's for a mound of white butter. Mr. Crawford and Mrs. Crawford looked alike and always smelled of sweet milk. See the Mrs. and Mr. Crawford. When I was young in the mountains, we pumped pails of water from the well at the bottom of the hill and heated the water to fill round tin tubs for our baths. 
they didn't get water um, from a bathtub or anything. They had to go outside and put it in pails and heat it on the fire to have that. And showers and nutrients to eat. Afterward, we stood in front of the old black stove, shivering and giggling, while Grandmother heated cocoa on top. There's Grandmother making hot cocoa. When I was young in the mountains, we went to church in the schoolhouse on Sundays and sometimes walked with the congregation through the cow pasture to the dark swimming hole for baptism. Back then, they didn't have huge churches like you guys go to. My cousin Peter was laid back into the water while his shirt stuck to him and my grandmother cried. When I was singing in the mountains, we listened to frogs sing at dusk and awoke to cowbells outside our windows. Sometimes a black snake came in the yard and my grandmother would threaten it with a hoe. There's the snake and the hoe and the two children, if you can see, staring at them. If it did not leave, she used a hoe to kill it. Four of us once draped a very long snake, dead of course, across our necks for a photograph. It would be very scary. When I was young in the mountains, we sat on the porch swing in the evenings and Grandfather sharpened my pencils with his pocket knife. Grandmother sometimes shelled beans and sometimes braided my hair. A dog and Bob White whistled in the forest. Bob, Bob, Bob White. <laughs> There's Grandfather sharpening the pencils because they didn't have pencil sharpeners back then. When I was young in the mountains, I never wanted to go to the ocean and I never wanted to go to the desert. I never wanted to go anywhere else in the world where I was in the mountains. And that was always enough. That's the girl writing her journal. And that's the book. Very good. Beth, thank you. And now is my little sister reading, reading another book with a very long title. Thank you. That's <laughs> girl. I'm going to be it's reading Miss Biddlebox, Thanks. Her Bad Day and What She Did About It. There's Miss Biddlebox right there with, I think, her pet. On a grubby little hill in a dreary little bunk, Miss Biddlebox rolled over on the wrong side of the bunk. The birds gave her a headache, the creakies in her chair, the breeze blew dank and dreary and used mussy in her hair. So she slammed the door on morning and sat thinking what to do. The tea was dark and bitter, her crumpets hard to chew. With her belly full of grumblies and her hands upon her hips, an idea burst inside her and whistled from her lips. I will cook this rotten morning. I will turn it into cake. I will fire up my oven. I will set the day to bake. Miss Biddlebox got busy. She grabbed a pot and broom. She tromped out into morning to gather up the gloom. She snatched a patch of grubby lawn and she scuffled with the dirt. She plucked a filthy shadow from her full of her old dirt. When the fog gave her the whistles, she held her broomstick steady, stabbed the dreary lot of it and twirled it like spaghetti. <clears throat> Miss Biddlebox reached up and hooked a ray of sun, then yanked it like a ball of yarn until it came undone. She rolled the sky like carpeting, the birdies flew away. Now the pot was overflowing with a despicable meaning. Now that's the pot with all the bad things, the fog, the sky, the shadow. So she whipped and whisked and beat it. She rolled the day out flat. Miss Biddlebox laughed gleefully. Her hands went pat, pat, pat. When the dough was finally finished, when it rose up fat and light, she stomped it down into a tin with witching delight. And oh, the day could bake merrily. And oh, the spicy heat. Miss Biddlebox could not deny it was turning out quite sweet. There she is like, there she is dancing around, so happy. She poured a cup of lovely tea. She set a pretty plate. She cut a merry slice of cake and ate and ate and ate. Now when
with her belly full of crumbies and her nighty cap pulled tight, she threw the doors wide open and welcomed in the night. There she is with her nighty cap and she's ready to go to bed. On a grubby little hill in a cozy little heap, Miss Biddlebox rolled over, closed her eyes, and went to sleep. That was Miss Biddlebox, her bad day, and what she did about it. I hope you liked it. Yeah, good job, girls. Good job. Thank you, girls. Thank you so much. That was a great start to our children's reading. Uh, and while we're clapping, one of our traditions on story time is to clap at home and here for all of the nurses and doctors and firemen and policemen and first responders and people that are working in the grocery stores and all the stores that are being open and now even stores like Reed's now to help people find the things they need. So join me, girls, help me. Let's clap for the nurses and the doctors and all the people at the hospitals and the clinics and hope that they all stay safe. All right, well, that was exciting. That was exciting. These girls, we may find, I hope we'll find a lot more children that will volunteer to read to us. So I'm going to read now The Gruffalo uh, by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. Uh, this book has won a lot of prizes. It sold, I think, 13 million copies. Wow. Ooh, that's so, one of my favorite books. Yeah, it's a great book. Well, good, Bess. Well, I'm glad you read like it. You can help me, uh, help me read it then. The Gruffalo. You've heard, you know, we've got a buffalo park in Tupelo. Gruffalo's sort of like a buffalo. A mouse took a stroll through the deep dark wood. A fox saw the mouse, and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come and have lunch in my underground house. It's terribly kind of you, fox, but no, I'm going to have lunch with a gruffalo. A gruffalo? What's a gruffalo? A Gruffalo? Why didn't you know? He has terrible tusks and terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws. Where are you meeting him? Here by these rocks and his favorite food is roasted fox. Roasted fox? I'm off, Fox said. Goodbye, little mouse, and away he sped. See the old fox, doesn't he know there's no such thing as a Gruffalo? On with the mouse through the deep dark wood. An owl, see the owl, saw the mouse and the mouse looked good. Where are you going, little brown mouse? Come and have tea in my treetop house. It's frightfully nice of you, owl, but no, I'm going to have tea with a gruffalo. A gruffalo? What's a gruffalo? A gruffalo? Why don't you know? He has knobby knees and turned out toes and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. Where are you meeting him? Here by the stream. His favorite food is owl ice cream. Owl ice cream? To wit, to woo. Goodbye, little mouse. And away owl flew. Silly old owl, doesn't he know there's no such thing as a gruffalo? Don't you think there's such thing as a gruffalo? No. Mm, we'll see. On went the mouse through the deep dark wood. A snake saw the mouse, and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come for a feast in my log pile house. It's wonderfully good of you, snake, but no, I'm having a feast with a gruffalo. A gruffalo? What's a gruffalo? A gruffalo? Why don't you know? His eyes are orange, his tongue is black. He has purple prickles all over his back. Where are you meeting him? Here by this lake, and his favorite food is scrambled snake. Scrambled snake, it's time I hid. Goodbye, little mouse, and away snake slid. It's a pretty smart mouse, isn't he? He's telling all of these animals that the gruffalo's favorite food is them. So they are scared they run away. Very clever mouse. Silly old snake, doesn't he know? There's no such thing as a gruffalo, said the mouse. No. Oh, whoops. Now what did the mouse see? But who is this creature with terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws? He has knobbly knees and a turned out toes and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. His eyes are orange, his tongue is black. 
He has purple prickles all over his back. Oh, help! Oh, no! It's a... Gruffalo! Oh, a Gruffalo! Reading Bess, what's going to happen? Now there really is a Gruffalo. Ah! It's Snake, said the mouse. Why, Snake, hello. Snake took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh, crumbs, he said. Goodbye, little mouse. And off he sled to his little log house. What do you think, Ginger? You see, said Mouse, I told you so. Amazing, said the Gruffalo. They walked some more till the Gruffalo said, I hear a hoot in the trees ahead. You know what? I forgot a page. I'm going back. They met the Gruffalo. Oh, the Mouse did. My favorite food, the Gruffalo said, you'll taste good on a slice of bread. Good, said the Mouse. Don't call me good. I'm the scariest creature in this wood. Just walk behind me and soon you'll see everyone is afraid of me. All right, said the Gruffalo, bursting with laughter. You go ahead and I'll follow after. They walked and walked till the Gruffalo said, I hear a hiss in the leaves ahead. It's Snake, said the Mouse. Why, Snake, hello. Snake took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh, crumbs, he said. Goodbye, little Mouse. And off he slid to his log pile house. See, the Snake's afraid of the Gruffalo. You see, said Mouse, I told you so. Amazing, said the Gruffalo. They walked some more till the Gruffalo said, I hear a hoot in the trees ahead. It's Al, said the mouse. Why, Al, hello. Al took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh dear, he said. Goodbye, little mouse. And off he flew to his treetop house. You see, said mouse, I told you so. Astounding, said the Gruffalo. They walked some more till the Gruffalo said, I can hear feet on the path ahead. It's Fox, said the mouse. Bye, Fox, hello. Fox took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh, help, he said. Goodbye, little mouse. And off he ran to his underground house. Well, Gruffalo, said the mouse, you see, everyone is afraid of me. But now my tummy's beginning to rumble, and my favorite food is Gruffalo crumble. You think that'd be a good cake or pie? No. Yeah. <laughs> I like, like peach or like blueberry. Peach or blueberry instead yeah. of gruffalo crumble? Mm -hmm. well, we'll see. Gruffalo crumble, said the gruffalo. He's, the gruffalo said, and quick as the wind, he turned and fled. He ran away from the mouse. All quiet in the deep, all was quiet in the deep dark wood. The mouse found a nut and the nut was good. What a smart mouse. So he got rid of, what did he get rid of? A fox? A, a snake, an owl, and a gruffalo. Wow, a smart fox. All right, that's a great book. Well, we got time for one more book. Corduroy. You, know, you girls know this book, Corduroy? Yes. You like it? Yes. All right, good. Well, it's by Don Freeman. Maybe y'all can help me read this one. You said that the last time. <laughs> well, I'll say it again. Um, well, here, you want to come sit? Y'all want to come sit in my lap? You can read a line and I'll read a line. That's my idea. All right, come on. <laughs> All right. Okay, here, Beth, sit down. No, no, sit on this side. Sit on this side. All right. All right, Bess, you read the first line, read you the second, I'll read the third. Corduroy is a bed bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. One day, day after day, he waited with all the other animals and... Dolls for somebody to come along and take him. There he is, on the shelf. Yes. Hmm. Yes? The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things. But no one ever seemed to want a small bear with green in green overalls. Then one morning a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. You did two lines. Oh, keep going. Oh mommy, she said. Look, there's a bear. I've always finished the just finished wanted. <laughs> no, not today, dear. Her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, oh, sorry. He Besides, doesn't. he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. So there's the mama and the little girl. 
And they're in the toy store and they're examining corduroy. All right, read. Yep, that's right. Yes. Corduroy watched Ben sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight I'll go and see if I can find it. it. Okay, so there he's, he's noticed he's lost a button and he's sad because they didn't take him home. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf, shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. So he's searching away. Right, Suddenly, he felt the floor move, uh, moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped on an ex escalator, and up he went. Could this be a mountain, he wondered? I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. Wait. He had never been on an escalator before, had he? No. That some of you in the audience have been on an escalator. Yeah. They stepped out of the escalator as it reached the next floor. And there, before his eyes, was the most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. Ah, so he's gotten to the floor of the department store floor that has all the beds and mattresses. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And he crawled up onto a large, thick mattress. This must be. At all at once, he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried, and tried to pick it up. But like the other buttons on the mattresses, it was tied down tight. There he is. He's on the mattress stand trying to get a button from the mattress to put on his overalls. He yawned and he yanked and pulled with both paws on until pop! Ca off came the button and off the mattress corduroy toppled. Bang! Into a tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Ah, he oh, knocked no. over a lamp. He's having some trouble, isn't he? Yes? Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else in the store. The night watchman was going in his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came down, dashing down the escalator. Now who in the world did that? He exclaimed, somebody must be hiding around here. There's the night watchman. He flashed his light under the, over the sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? And there's Corduroy. Read. The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator. And set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. So now he's put back in his spot. Yes? Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning. And there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he'd only seen a day before. I, I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night, I counted what I saved in my piggy bank, and my mother said I could bring you home. Oh, isn't that nice? And there's, there's Lisa, the little girl. Who else is named Lisa? Um, Gigi. Yeah. <laughs> Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered. And she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. Isn't she excited? Haven't you been excited when you've had something of your own, like a doll or a toy that really is a puppy? Puppy? Read. Corduroy. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, and alongside, and alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed, just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This but must be my home, he said. I know I always wanted a home. 
Yeah. Lisa sat down with corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button to his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. Lisa found a home. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. All right, uh, let's read this together. You, you must be a friend, friend said, said Corduroy. Corduroy. I've, I've always wanted, wanted a friend. friend. Me too, Me too, said Lisa, and gave, gave him, him a big hug. hug. Well, isn't that nice? All right, well, that's an, I'll give you all a big hug. That's a nice story to end story time on. And I hope you all have enjoyed story time at Reads. We'll see you next Friday at 1030. And remember, if you want to suggest or volunteer somebody to be one of the kid readers, uh, let us know at the bookstore and come see us at the bookstore. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Just remember to give your mama... A big hug and a kiss and say, this is for Mr. Jack at Reeds. Bye-bye.